Hello boys and girls, welcome back to prep. Let's start with our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, welcome back, guys. I hope you have your book and a pencil. Please open your book to page 131. I should hold this up so I'm not bending down. <laughs> All right, 131. I'll read and you read along with me. We celebrate the sacraments. Wow. We gather. God loves us very much. Let us thank God for all the ways he shows his love for us. Let us thank God for sending his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. Thank you, God, for giving us your son, Jesus. Amen. Jesus is with us. Jesus is with us today. Beside us to guide us today. Jesus teaches us. Jesus heals us. For we are his church. We are his chosen. We are the children of God. What are some signs that you see in your neighborhood? Tell why each one is important. Oh, well, that's a good, good thing. Well, the stop sign is really important, right? When you're at the corner and there's four cars and everybody has a stop sign and tells everybody to stop. Otherwise, they'd all crash into each other, right? And then there's signs telling you how fast or slow to go on that road. Because they might be slow because you don't know. But there might be hills and curves ahead, right? So signs are very helpful. Let's see, page 132. We believe the church celebrates the sacraments. Every day we can see all kinds of signs. A sign stands for or tells us about something. A sign can be something we see or something we do. Jesus often pointed to ordinary things to help us to learn more about God. He spoke about birds, wheat, and even wildflowers as signs of God's love. Jesus' actions were signs of God's love too. He held children in his arms. He touched people and healed them. He comforted sinners and forgave them. The church celebrates seven special signs. We call these signs sacraments. Sacraments. A sacrament is a special sign given to us by Jesus through which we share in God's life and love. The seven sacraments are baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, penance, and reconciliation. That's one thing. Anointing of the sick holy orders, and matrimony. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we receive and celebrate God's own life and love in the sacrament. Our share in God's life and love is called grace. Our share in God's life and love is called grace. Through the power of grace, we grow in holiness. The sacraments help us to live as Jesus' disciples. Then in the blue box... It says, as Catholics, now that's a little different, sacramentals are blessings, actions, and special objects given to us by the church. They help us to respond to the grace we receive in the sacraments. Blessings of people, places, and food are sacramentals. Actions such as making the sign of the cross and the sprinkling of holy water are sacramentals. Some objects that are sacramentals are statues medals, rosaries, candles, and crucifixes. So remember, they're not, they're called sacramentals. They're not sacraments, but they help us to get the grace from our sacraments. They're like holy reminders, right? To, you know, my medal here, see? Miraculous medal. Then, you guys probably have one of these, maybe? Hmm? That's a sacramental, right? What else? My towel cross is a sacramental. My 
holy picture can be a sacramental. My, uh, there they are. <laughs> I throw them in when I'm sleepy, so I never find <laughs> Rosary beads are sacramental. The question box there on your book says, list the sacraments you have received. So I bet you have received baptism, Holy Eucharist, and uh, penance or reconciliation. Now let's turn to page 133. Oops, my scapular, that's this that was I showed you, is not supposed to show. There we go. Baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist are the sacraments of Christian initia initiation. We are joined to Jesus in the church through the sacraments of Christian initiation. Baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. Another word for initiation is beginning. Through the sacraments of Christian initiation, a new life of grace begins in us. In baptism, the church welcomes us. We become children of God and members of the church. Each of us is born with original sin, the first sin committed by the first human beings. Through baptism, God frees us from original sin and forgives any sins we may have committed. God fills us with grace, his life, and love. In confirmation, we are sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us strength and courage to live as disciples of Jesus. In the Eucharist, we praise and thank God the Father for sending his Son, Jesus. We receive Jesus' body and blood in Holy Communion. We grow closer to Jesus and all the members of the church. So they have some key words there, and they have pictures. They have a little girl getting the Eucharist and a priest behind her like there must be two lines and then there's a boy getting confirmed that's that's a boy getting his sacrament of confirmation from the bishop so he has a bishop's miter on that's a special hat and he ha has that special staff he carries called a crozier and he makes the seal of the holy spirit on that boy's forehead you'll have that sacrament probably in eighth grade <clears throat> now let's turn our page to 134 Penance and reconciliation and anointing of the sick are sacraments of healing. During his ministry, Jesus healed many people. Sometimes he did this when he cured them of their sickness. At other times, Jesus forgave people their sins. Jesus gave the church the power to continue his healing work. The church does this especially through two sacraments, penance and reconciliation and anointing of the sick. These sacraments are called sacraments of healing. So they, well, you know, sacra sacrament of the sick or anointing of the sick helps your body and your soul get better. And sometimes your body doesn't get all the way better because sometimes that's God's will for you. He permits you to be sick because he's going to bring greater good out of it, right? Um, but he certainly always heals your soul um, and gives you strength to bear your sickness. Like he gives you grace, which is his life and love in you to help you um, to be strong during your sickness. Okay. <clears throat> In the sacrament of penance and reconciliation, we confess our sins to the priest and promise to do better. In the name of God, the priest forgives our sins. Our relationship with God and others is healed. In the sacrament of anointing of the sick, the priest lays his hands on the sick. He blesses them with holy oil and prays for their health. They're strengthened in their faith, and sometimes their bodies are healed. They receive the peace of Christ. All right, think about someone you need to forgive or someone you know who is sick. What can you do to show them your love or care? Well, certainly, if you need to forgive someone, you do that. And, and if somebody's sick, you can visit them or call them, like uh, FaceTime, email, text them, and pray for them, right? Holy Orders and Matrimony. Now this is page 135. Holy Orders and Matrimony are sacraments of service to others. So, in the sacrament of Holy Orders, oh I'm sorry, through baptism, God calls each one of us to be a sign of his love to others. We each have a vocation to serve God and the church. The church celebrates two sacraments that are special signs of service, Holy Orders and Matrimony. In the sacrament of holy orders, baptized men are ordained, ordained to serve the church as deacons, priests, and bishops. This sacrament gives them the grace to live out their vocation of service in the church. 
Bishops serve the church by leading a larger community of faith called a diocese. They lead their dioceses in service, teaching, prayer, and sacraments. Under their guidance, priests also carry on the ministry of Jesus. Priests usually serve in parishes. They lead the celebration of the sacraments, guide the people they serve, and reach out to those who are in need. Some priests teach in schools. Along with the bishops and priests, deacons are ordained to serve the diocese. Deacons do many things to help in their parish worship. They also have a special responsibility to serve those who are in need. In the sacrament of matrimony or marriage, the love of a man and a woman is blessed. They are united in the love of Christ. The husband and wife receive the grace to help them to be faithful to each other. The sacrament also helps the couple to share God's love with their family. They grow in holiness as they serve the church together. It says, draw or write how you and your friends join in the celebration of the sacraments. So, you know, after we're done reading, you know, when this is over, you can maybe go back and draw yourself receiving a Holy Communion, maybe. Like that, something like that. All right, page 136. So, that and 137. Let's see. Hmm kind of like a quiz there but I don't want to worry about that one because it's not the one for homework uh, let's go to page 138 that's going to be the homework page where it says um grade 3 chapter 15 chapter test page 138 fill in the circle beside the correct answer so let's like we've been doing let's do our homework now okay so you know you got it right and everything and it's, it's out it's done all right, fill in the circle. The sacraments of Christian initiation are blank, confirmation, and Eucharist. Hmm. You should have colored the circle by baptism. Those are the sacraments of initiation. Baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. The sacraments of healing are blank and anointing of the sick. Is it baptism or penance and reconciliation? Well, it's penance and reconciliation. Three, the sacraments of service to others are holy orders and is it penance and reconciliation or matrimony? It's matrimony. In baptism, we are freed from blank. Freed from grace? No. Freed from original sin? Yes. So you color in that circle. Write T if the sentence is true. Write F if the sentence is false. Five. Jesus did not give anyone the power to continue his healing work. That's false. He gave it to his bishops and priests and deacons. Six, grace is our share in God's life and love. That's true. Seven, in confirmation, we are sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. That would be T, true. Eight, there are 12 sacraments. That's false. So you write an F for false. There are seven sacraments. So it's F, T, T, F. Right, two ways Jesus healed people. This is number nine. Jesus cured people of their sickness. Jesus forgave people of their sins. Right? So that's easy. Um, right, two things that happen in the sacrament of baptism. We are welcomed into the church and become children of God. We are freed from original sin and any sins we may have committed. So if you're a baby, you didn't commit any sins yet. Because you don't know what a sin is. Um, and babies, just little babies, don't do anything wrong. But sometimes people don't get baptized till they're much older. And the beautiful thing is, you could be 80 years old when you're baptized, and all the sins from your life are swept away, and your soul is perfectly clean. But it's better to get baptized sooner, like as soon as you can when you're little. So that way you have more grace to help you be good your whole life, right? then you can be receive the other sacraments right because you don't receive the other sacraments till you're baptized okay so that's the book for this week that would be your homework page 138 please have your mother or father take a picture of it and either email it or text it to prep and before we say our closing prayer i just wanted to go over lent a little bit let's do a little checkup on how we're doing um remember prayer fasting and almsgiving so how's your prayer life going Do, are you remember when we got together in church and we talked about making like a plan how's that going if you haven't done it yet start start now it's not too late 
um, fasting. That means not snacking on Fridays and Lent. Um, and we abstain from meat on Fridays and Lent. Almsgiving. That's where we, you know, give t our time, our talent, or our treasure. Treasure being money to help other people. And on that note, um, maybe at church this week you saw this, these bottles. So that those, those are the bottles I, I mentioned to you. We're going to do things and give up things and fill the bottles with money. Check or ca cash. Maybe you can do little jobs for money and put the money in there. And then we'll, we'll give them in. And then our older service will give that money um, to women who are having a baby. And they need money to help take care of themselves and their baby. And that's one of the things we can do for almsgiving this Lent for our parish. All right. So think of something you're thankful for, boys and girls, or things, more than one thing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I adore you. Jesus, I give you thanks. I give you thanks for our prep class, for our Catholic faith, for springtime coming. I give you thanks for my health and for my family and friends. Jesus, I ask for your forgiveness. Jesus, I ask for your grace. Jesus, I offer myself to you like Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, boys and girls. Well, till next time, have a good week. See ya. Thank you, Mrs. Sims. Let's review your homework once again. If you're watching this on your own, please get a parent so they can listen. For homework this week, practice your prayers and do one of the following choices. The chapter 15 test on page 138, which Mrs. Imms already reviewed with you during the video. Or if you find it easier, you can draw or write the sacraments that you have already received. Once completed, please take a picture of the homework and send it to us by email or text. Please send it by noon, Saturday, March 6. De tarea esta semana, practiquen sus oraciones y envíenos una foto de una de las siguientes actividades. La página 138 de su libro, la cual la señora Ims ya les ayudó a completar durante este video. O si se les hace más fácil, díganos qué sacramentos ya recibieron. La tarea debe de ser entregada para el mediodía del sábado 6 de marzo.